Welcome back everyone to the Hello World Guy and in this video we are going to remake our uh, we are actually going to make our jumping system for our player uh, in our 3D platformer game and uh, for this we will first of all uh, create a basic jumping and ground track system then we want something a bit more advanced uh, which uh, allows our player to you know uh, move uh, you know do different kind of jumps like uh, uh, we will add double jumping and we will add so it's so that when the player holds the button for a little while it jumps longer and stuff like that so yeah let's uh, let's get started with that now we will open up the player script and in here let me just go down in the abate method when we have got this and what we can do here is we can basically check if uh, uh, we can check if our input and dot get button down uh, jump uh, so if we are pressing jump then well we want to jump now for this you may do something like uh, saying rb dot add for uh, add uh, force and uh, you know for the force you might say new vector 3 uh, 0 and uh, let's say uh, or you might want to add something like y force here uh, I will add a variable called jump force which currently does not exist uh, but we will create in a second and for the mode make sure you have got saying force mod dot impulse uh, all right we will try experiment with different force modes to find out what works best for us in here anyway go ahead and create a CDLI field here uh, a CDLI field theory uh, command CDLI field here a it will be a uh, command this is not working and we will create a private uh, float called jump force so a private float called jump force and yeah this uh, basically should work so if I let it compile now and then I open up unity and in here I'm just going to hit I'm just going to select the player and make sure that the jump force is set to something higher like let's say 20 and let's try to run the game now and see what it looks like uh, so remember in the last video we created our movement system completely so if I hit jump now you can see that well that works but it's way too high so I think that we might reduce it to down to something like 4 let's try 4 uh, maybe 4 would be a bit less let's try 7 okay uh, our speed is by the way 7 as well so jump force is also 7 so let's see how well it goes and yeah that that looks pretty awesome uh, currently so we can jump as much as we want without causing any problems which uh, is uh, not the best thing really okay that's a kind of a bug that we will need to fix here uh, <laughs> sometimes this happens uh, and we will fix that in a second but first of all uh, let's go ahead and uh, change a little bit of settings here so first of all uh, you can go ahead and okay uh, we haven't got the gravity scale option and we did in the uh, 2d version but well uh, if the gravity feels too slow we might fix it later but first of all we want to add ground check to our player now so if i open up the player script here i'm just going to go uh, here and i'm going to add in a private void here called private bool here called uh, is grounded and there's going to be a function so we are going to create a function here which is going to have a bool called is grounded equal to false and then we are going to see return is grounded okay in here we will uh, do all of that method but we, uh, when we are doing this we will also check uh, if uh, our player is grounded all right uh, with that done what we can do here is uh, we can try to add all of that uh, uh, we can try to add the actual functionality for this so what you might want to what we will actually do here is we will have a CDLI field a private uh, uh, a private transform called feet which will represent the player feet and then what we will do here is that we will say uh, physics physics and you can go ahead and say something like overlap uh, sphere and in here for the position you can just give us give the uh, what we have got here feet dot position position and for the radius what you can do is you can just say something like uh, 0.2 I guess doesn't really matter uh, 0.2 and after doing that we can see this dot or less where all by the way and once we do that this gives us a uh, okay no uh, overlap sphere uh, okay it returns an array oh, I thought that is my not okay so this returns a collider array what we can do is we can go for each uh, bar 
collider or we can or what you can do actually um, but that might lead to a problem so we will go and say for each var uh, collider um, in physics dot overlap sphere what we will do is that we will say um, something like uh, we will carry this okay and in here we will say if collider dot uh, if collider dot compare tag uh, actually it's not compare tag uh, we might want to use a layer mask here so for this uh, we will have to check a layer so but the idea is that we will have a bunch of layers uh, for check or maybe for right now we can just add in a simple player check so we can go if not uh, because we do not want it to register collisions with the player so you might say something like collision dot uh, compare tag uh, player uh, is not collider or compare tag player so we will just compare the tag with player and if it's not the player then we will register the collision and we will set is grounded to be true and yeah just like that we can go up here now and uh, uh, not actually here uh, we can go into unity let's compile and in here i'm going to just select my player go under the tag and add tag and okay we don't need to add a tag there should be a player tag automatically okay set the player tag and make sure that the glasses is also set to player then right uh, then i'm going to go under the scene view and uh, you can click this icon here to go under side view and this to go under orthographic view and uh, oh by the way it might not be visible so make sure that your near is not like that uh, actually this is a bit of a problem okay just go ahead and turn off orthographic projection what we want is that we want a small feet here so we are going to right click and create an empty game object called feet uh, feet come on and then we are going to drag this down here until it reaches the bottom of the player's body all right, then we are going to select our player. We are going to go under the uh, go under the feet, and we are going to drag our feet here, and let's see how well that goes. So once I run it, you can see that I can jump if I'm on the ground, but I cannot jump if I am uh, jump if I am on the in the air. So that's pretty awesome. Now we can implement uh, double jumping as well because of course that's kind of really important as this is a platformer game after all. For this, what we will do is that we will create a. Uh, you might actually want to create a header here. I'm going to create a header called uh, movement uh, just it's nice to keep your code organized that way it looks nice in the inspector and add in a space after this and in here we are going to add another header saying something like uh, uh, jumping and in here we are going to have uh, a I'm going to create a civilized field here and a create a private uh, once we will create is a uh, integer called uh, max jump count is equal to one by default uh, or maybe two and what we will do is that we will create a um, we will create have a private int here called jump count jump count and uh, what we will do is that each time we, when we are jumping we do not actually check if grounded and each time we check if uh, and jump count is uh, less than max jump count so yeah, if the player has, uh, if it's less than the jam max jam amount, then we will jump. And then we will go uh, here and we now need to detect when our, when we actually ran, uh, uh, land on the ground. So for this, what we can do is if we can say something like, uh, we can create a uh, another Google here for that. We, okay, let me just break up this uh, article line here. I'm going to create a private bool here called uh, jump, uh, called uh, was grounded. So we have got if grounded and was grounded. So what we will do in here is that we will set uh, was grounded is equal to if grounded right now whether the player is grounded and uh, uh, we are setting this to this. But before we do that, we are going to check if um, uh, not was grounded. So the player wasn't previously grounded and the player is grounded now. Then we are going to which means that the player just landed. Then we are going to say jump count is equal to zero. And each time we jump, what we want to do is that we want to increment our jump count. So just add uh, these uh, braces here. And then what we are going to do is we are going to move over to these. And here we are going to say jump count plus plus to increment it. All right. With that done, this should uh, hopefully work. Let's uh, let you see how well it goes. And uh, yeah, let's let's open up uh, Unity and let's uh, try to. Okay, let's compiling. And now we will hit play and see how well it goes. So in here we have got two as a max jump count and let's hit play. So yeah, it's compiling and once it done that, uh, you can see that we can jump and we can jump again, but we cannot jump after that. 
we can jump one, we can jump twice, and we cannot jump again, and then we can only jump when we actually land. So yeah, this is pretty awesome. Now we have got a pretty good jumping system in our game uh, implemented as well. So yeah, uh, I now I think we want to add a feature so that if we hold the space key for longer, then the jump is uh, longer. So that would be kind of a really nice feature to have. So I think we should add that. But I'm actually not going to show you that. Instead, I think it will be a great exercise if you try to do it on your own and I will have the uh, have a link to the whole uh, player controller if you get stuck but uh, try to implement it on your own and see if you can manage it and uh, if you get stuck then the link will be for that the link will be in the description. So yeah, uh, the video is pretty much done here and make sure to like and subscribe. Also check out my other devlogs channel and I will see you in the next one. Bye.